Hey, it's Harper from Play. Today we're gonna to start from scratch and build a TikTok style card. We'll then turn it into a component and then we'll turn it into a scrollable stack so you can swipe through the same way you would in TikTok feed. So first, let's get started. We need a container to hold our card. We're gonna use a stack for this. So I'm going to add it from the add panel. I'm gonna select one of these three elements. They're all stacks and technically they're all the same element. They're just different directions. I'm gonna use a Z stack because this is more freeform and we'll talk more about Z, or Z stacks, H stacks, and V stacks in a bit. So I want this stack to be the same size as my page. So I wanna set its width and height to both be 100%. So I'm gonna go over into the layout panel and I'm just gonna type in in the width property 100% and in the height property also 100%. Now it's gonna be 100% of this page. And in play, you can choose which device model you're viewing. So right now it's a 15 Pro, but you can look at what a 16 plus looks like all the way down to an iPhone 8. Now, if you wanna rename this stack, which I know a lot of people like to keep their layers list very, very clean, you can just double click on the name and then type in your name. It's gonna save here and in the layers panel. Now, the main part of a TikTok video is the video. So inside this stack, we need to add a video. You can do that from the add panel, which is what we just did, or we can add it using the quick add menu. So I can either use A on my keyboard or press this little icon. In here, I can search for video. And just by pressing enter, it automatically adds it into the stack. Now I want this to be the same size. I can set its width to be fill and its height to be fill as well. So I'm just going to click on, right click on the edge and select fill. Now to set the actual content, you'll just double click. Here you'll see a list of all the assets. And if you're on a pro plan, you can upload your own videos. If you're not, you can search through our Pexel library. So you can select any of these. Maybe we do this one. And it's automatically gonna be playing when it's selected. When it's not, not selected, selected, play. Now let's create the content that's gonna go on top of it. So we are gonna need a username and a caption. So I'm gonna add a text element. I can do this from the add panel or using the keyboard shortcut T. Now, once I add this, I just need to add a username. So I'm gonna be a creative and say Harcourt from Play. Now that I have this text element and my copy in there, I can style it. So I can use my context bar right here, or I can use my element settings panel on the side, along with my layout position and appearance panel. The content inside, like all the properties inside the element settings panel and in the context bar are the same. So it's just about if you wanna keep your mouse really close or if you wanna see everything written out a bit more, you can use the element settings panel. Anyways, I can now customize this. I'm gonna keep it at this SF system font and then you can change the weight, you can change the size, you can change the design, the width, the color, all of this stuff from here, alignment settings, all of that's available here. Once you've styled this correctly or however you'd like it to be, we now want another text element. So I can do this by using the same keyboard shortcut or I can duplicate this one. So I'm going to press command D and that's gonna duplicate that. Now I can style the second element. So this to be regular, this to be a lot smaller. And then I want it to say the caption, which is maybe, wow, play is the best design tool I've ever seen. Nice. It's true. So now I have this text element and this text element. I want to group these together in another stack. So I'm gonna select both of them and press Command G. That's gonna group them into a stack. Now they were placed kind of one on top of the other. So play automatically, put them in a V stack. Now in a V stack, everything's positioned relatively. So if I wanted to drag this to a different place, you can see it doesn't really work like that. I can either move it out of the stack or use my arrow keys to change its order, but it's all gonna be placed relatively stacked vertically. You can also change this to be a horizontal stack, and this is gonna stack them next to one another. A Z stack will place everything right on top of each other. So if we did that, you can see, you wouldn't wanna do that for text elements. So I'm gonna change this back to a V stack, and now we can style the stack. And when you're styling the stack, it's basically how these elements inside it, which are called the children of the stack, which is called the parent, they're how they're gonna to look together. So we want the height of this to be auto. We're just going to hug and basically be, the height's gonna be determined by the height of the children. So I can set this to be auto 
I can also just double click on this edge, it's gonna make it auto. And as you can see, it's going to hug this. And I can also do that for the width, or I can set this to be fill. So I'm gonna right click and press fill. Now it's gonna fill up any unused space. I can also adjust the gap. So maybe I want them to be a little bit closer together. We can make it like four, nice. Maybe I also wanna adjust the color inside here of all of these things. So I could do that individually. I could just change the color to be white. Or I could go down to my used colors, select all of this together. And from that used colors, I can just change anything that's black to be white. So that's gonna work perfectly here. Now we're gonna come back to this stack in a second, but for now I'm just going to um, title it copy. Now let's create the action stack. So this is things like the like button, the comment button, sharing, saving, all of that stuff. So we're gonna start just by creating one action. This is gonna be a like button. So I'm going to add an SF symbol using the B keyboard shortcut. And this is gonna give you access to all of Apple's SF symbols. There's well, like nearly 7,000 of them. And in here you can search for things um, like heart. And I'm gonna set this to be fill. And now you can customize this the same way we customize everything else. I can change the scale, I can change the size, make it bigger, change the weight, I can change the color here, make it a white system color. Then I can also add a border or shadow from the appearance panel. So I'm gonna add shadow, and you can go in and edit the shadow if I want it to be a different color, more offset, all of that stuff. But I think this looks good for now. Next, I'm gonna add another text element. So I'm gonna use the T keyboard shortcut. And inside here, I'm just gonna put my like count. So obviously very popular, so 101K, whoa. And now we can customize this. So I will make it maybe a little bolder, make it a lot smaller. I can change the design if I want it to be mono space. It's kind of cool. Um, and I can change the color. And then I can also add a shadow to this so it matches the same style. So now I have my icon and I have my text element. I'm gonna select both of these and I'm gonna group them together using Command G. I could also right click and do add to new stack and group them together that way, but this works for now. Now I can style this stack. So I can center it, I can remove the gap spacing and there's still too much space so I can also adjust any of the children inside here. So I can go back to that symbol and I could adjust the height of this, maybe to 36 or something like that. Nice, that looks pretty good. So now I can just rename this to be action. I'm renaming it to be action, not like button, because we can turn this into a component and we can change the data in here to use it for different actions. So I have this, I'm gonna turn it into a component by pressing this button in the context bar. And now I can duplicate this. Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. So now I have these four actions and I'm gonna select all of those and I am going to group them together. And these are all instances of the component. So it's like copies of this main component. If I were to change something in the main component, like adding you know, a background color or something, it's gonna be updated on all of the instances. Obviously wouldn't do that though, because that does not look good. Now I'm gonna change this into a V stack. Set the width to auto and the height to auto just by double clicking on both of those edges. And I'm gonna name the whole thing actions. So now we can go into this action stack and we can choose the different icons and the different text elements. So for this, maybe we want this to be a message for commenting. And maybe you have 25 comments. We can make this one a bookmark. Maybe 20K people have saved this. And then this last one, we can do sharing. And with SF symbols, you can search for anything and there are just so many in here. So in an effort to help you out with remembering the names, now when you select one, its name is going to be in the element setting panel here. So you can tell that this arrow is called arrow shape dot turn and more and more. <laughs> so now we have all of these all styled. So now we can take this action stack and this copy stack and we wanna add both of them into this Z stack. So I mentioned earlier that Z stacks are different than H stacks or V stacks. H stacks and V stacks are all positioned relatively. And in TikTok, or sorry, and in a Z stack, everything is more freeform. So you can move it around and place it exactly where you'd like it to go. You can also though, align things. So I have my TikTok card 
selected, the parent here, and I can align everything to the left, the top, the bottom, the right. So now everything is aligned to the bottom right. And now I can style everything. So on this stack down here, I'm going to add a little bit more padding. So let's make that 24. And then I'm also going to take this action stack and I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. So I am just going to use my up keyboard to move this up maybe 64 points. So now you can see the contents here, my actions are here, and it's all inside this broader card. And now if I were to go onto my iOS device, you can see that I have all of my actions here and I have the text and it's all showing up on my phone. Great. So that's the TikTok card. So let's turn that whole thing into a component so that we can reuse it throughout our design. Specifically, we're gonna use it a bunch of times in one stack so you can scroll through each of these. So I have this card and I'm now gonna duplicate this. Command D. I'm gonna duplicate this a bunch of times. Let's do four times. And now I can select all of these. And now I'm gonna add these into a V stack. So you can see now I have this super, super, super long V stack that is filling 100% of the height. So that's obviously not what we want. So we wanna change the stack's height to 100%. Now that looks a little bit more normal. So now we have this card and all the other ones are in here. And on my iOS device, you can see I can scroll through and it's just a free scroll all the way through. So now let's keep styling this. You can see there's a little bit of gap in between those. Don't want that. So we can remove that gap. And also, as I said before, it's kind of free scrolling and we want it to stack into position the same way the actual TikTok app does. So on my full stack, I'm gonna turn on paging. And I'm just going to have it be default. So now it's going to snap into position. So if I reset this, I can scroll down and it's going to snap, 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 as opposed to scrolling and not stopping. So that's the power of paging there. Now, the one thing I'm noticing is that there's not too much space here at the bottom. And we can fix that by adding bottom safe area padding. So I am going to select this stack of cards down here. And I'm going to go in my padding slider and I'm going to add some bottom padding. And you can see it's now going to be bumped up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing here. <laughs> well, actually for here, I'm just going to use my offset to move this up a little bit more. Let's maybe have it just be a hundred points offset for the bottom. So now there's a lot more space here. And on my iOS device, when I reset this, you can see there's more space. It gives us a little bit more breathing room. We updated this on an instance though. So we want to make sure that this is going to be applied to all of them because you see by default, it's not. So I'm going to go into this override and I'm going to choose push overrides. And now you can see that that's updated the main component and it's updated every instance of this component as well. So now the last thing I'll do is just rename this whole stack. So infinite scroll, even though it's not actually infinite right now. And now you can see on my iOS device, it looks good on my actual page here. Check out the next video and we're gonna add some more interactions to this TikTok prototype. Thanks so much for watching.